first of all, uh, you know, Black Bloc, which is sort of the, a, a good number of the people that, you know, meet in parks at night at eight o'clock. You don't know what park it's going to be if you're a citizen, unless you're like watching, you know, the certain groups that announce it earlier in the day and they have their little, they get together, they do a little shield practice and then they, they go out and they attack whatever they're going to attack, whether it's, you know, the Portland Police Union or the ICE headquarters or a police station. And they, uh, they have, and I, I think you've probably seen this, uh, they have dozens and dozens of people running around that says press, right? A little, a little on their hat or on their shirt. Now, obviously, as a real press person, I've never done that in my entire life, but they do this for several reasons. One is because uh, in Portland, you're not allowed to interfere with the press. The press must be allowed to observe. But they also film incessantly. First of all, they're of the filming generation, right? Everything is filmed. And then they edit it very carefully so that you see that they are always sort of victimized by the police or, you know, by a citizen that's yelling at them. Meanwhile, um, if you are just trying to film because that's your job, uh, they will just shout in your face over and over and over. You're not allowed to film. You're not allowed to film. It's like, excuse me, who, uh, who in the world said this? You could tell me that, but it's not true. I had my phone stolen. I luckily got it back um, because I was filming. Um, but they are creating the narrative that seeps out into the media. Uh, one thing I noticed, too, that they do, um, they, they have these shields, right, that they build and has the anarchist system or it doesn't, and they go out and they kind of like set up. They're going to they're gonna defend themselves from the police. But I don't think that's what it's about at all. It's all about getting the picture of the police that, that cuts through these shields like a hot knife through butter because these kids are, they are sort of ungainly for the most part. And it's basically to get another shot of them being victimized by the brutal Gestapo that are the police that they are out to uh, get rid of. Uh, they're not doing a terribly bad job of, of making uh, the police look bad, if you want to believe their narrative. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's, um, it's, abs it's absolutely terrifying to watch how the press handles what's going on. It doesn't make the least effort to report what's actually taking place. In essence, what happens is, um, you know, actually there's a, have you seen a film, I think it's called A Film Unfinished? Uh, what it is, is the Nazis set out to make a propaganda film in the Warsaw Ghetto, and they never finished it. And a modern director took the footage and um, reassembled it so you could see what the Nazis were up to, right? And it was like take after take of some situation that made the Jews in the ghetto look awful. But it was like they would do the same scene you know, 20 times right? with the intent to get the one that looked worst and that the only thing you needed to see in order to understand what was really going on was the, you know, the 20 takes, you know, where it was like action, you know. Um, and so this is, it has the same flavor where it's like, okay, you're going to have hour after hour of interaction between the police and the rioters. And they're going to cut to the 15 seconds that if you just don't see what happened right before and right after, you'll take this to be the police aggressing against the rioters. And the fact is, the other story is right there ready to be reported. That's but right. what I, I don't see is the national press anywhere. No. Well, you know, it, that's interesting. I didn't see much national press uh, when I was in the ground, either in, the federal, in front of the federal building or when I was going out last week with them on the ground. Um, you know, there's a lot of news going on in the country, obviously. Uh, Portland is a story. Um, but a lot of people, I think, are, you know, just relying on, you know, grabbing these clips from online. And, and most of it will grab the narrative that it's like, you know, the, the evil feds and the evil police. And then, of course, unfortunately, you have on the other side, which they just grab the, the absolutely worst thing that some protester is, or demonstrator. I'm calling them demonstrators now. Because if you call them protesters, people are like, are you kidding? You're going to still run with that line? And if you call them rioters, then you get, they're just out there peaceful protesting. So I'm settling on demonstrators right now. I want to so, come back to that, but I finish okay. your riff and I want to okay. come back to it. I'm just saying you've got the other side of uh, th the press that goes too far, I think, sometimes, which is like, savages coming to your city. And it's like, okay, guys, you know, the story, you have this on a side, like, the story's in the middle. 
to the, for the most part. So that's, that's been the story I've been trying to tell. it. Anyway, demonstrators, go for it. Well, first of all, I'm not so sure the story is in the middle. Um, okay. The story is not the version that either of the two now discontinuous elements of the press are reporting. So I guess maybe technically it's between them. You have a really inconvenient video for their narrative, right? Right. Now, it's not hard to catch an inconvenient video of their narrative because they're constantly doing things to provoke. And if you catch the provocation, then the whole thing is over. So what happens? Well, they will demonize you. They will demonize your publication. Um, and if all else fails, they will just flat out lie about the nature of whatever it is you oh. have produced. And the point is, it is not going to, it, I call it implausible deniability. And the idea is <laughs> it's constructed for people who want something to say. And the point is it doesn't matter how low grade it is. They'll give you the best thing they can give you to dismiss anything you want to dismiss right up you know, through a lie if they have to. And the point is if you're MSNBC and you're trying to construct a story of peaceful protesters who are being attacked by Trump's feds, yada, 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 then you just go through the thing, and basically the point is you have an excuse for everything you don't want to report, and then you have a list of things that you want to amplify, and you've created total fiction out of a, a kind of a pre-rationalized, editable content. And we can't live this way. The fact is, to be a, a, an entity uh, of the press, to be journalistic, you have to report things that are not consistent with the overarching story you're telling when they happen. And in this case, um, if you don't do that, what you get is a totally phony story, right? A totally phony story that's very compelling because it's made of video. You can't can't walk in with your uh, with your 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 end, like knowing, oh, I know how this story's gonna end. You gotta let the story tell itself to you. I think two things. I think it's ex I. I I, I not only think it's extremely irresponsible for any news organization or any entity at all to not report what they see, to, you know, to trim the facts, to fit the theory. I think it's extremely dangerous. I, I, I know it's extremely dangerous. And it's equally dangerous to, to pacify the story, to play down what's happening. It's like, and I, I you know, you get, this has sort of been a little like an insider baseball thing lately. It's like, what's the journalist's responsibility? Is it to, you know, fight power? Is it to speak truths to power? The journalist's responsibility is to report what you see. Okay? Yeah, we're all going to have our little blinders. I get it. I get it. You know, but you should. And that is something that I think has been in short supply in Portland, in my experience. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's been, it's been absent the danger couldn't be greater. I mean, and I it say this be. as somebody who's now living in Portland. I'm watching the police um, dwindle. I'm watching them hamstrung. I am watching them fatigue. I mean, they are mm -hmm. literally being attacked uh, up in Seattle. You know, it's a different version of the same phenomenon. We had an incident where um, quick drying cement of some kind yes. was used to attempt to lock police into a building that was being set on fire. Um, that's, it, I mean, that's attempted murder, right? Now, I don't know if this was symbolic or if they really thought the door was going to seal, but I want people to think about what it is like to have a group of people demonizing the police as all cops are bastards, as they are actually contemplating, simulating, hinting at, uh, suggesting murder of police, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. demonstrating that actually, you know what? They were in the commercial district. They were attacking government buildings. They're now in neighborhoods. They are now revealing that they view the populace of Portland as the enemy. And the fact is, there's no way out based on courageous leadership. Our leadership, our civilian leadership yeah. in Portland is absolutely out to lunch. It has been coddling this. It has created the phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And there's no alternative of people who are just even sensible. So where does this go? So a couple of things in terms of what they're doing to the police. I know they're throwing these sort of, um, you know, balloons now or paint balloons that have um, 
grit in it. So it'll actually like damage the helmet or damage a windshield. So you can't even like, uh, you can't even clean yourself off to see what you need to do. They also do things that it, that are so, I mean, you realize sometimes how young these people are. They, they, they now throw like, feces i i was there one night and the the cop was airing out the lobby of the police station because they came in through a bucket of feces and diarrhea i'm like so they actually did that like they all shit in a bucket like in, like this is like incredible you know that this is what you would think is the way we're going to change the world is we're all going to poop in a bucket it's mental patient stuff and to do it in the middle of a pandemic <laughs> yes. right wow well you know they're invincible because they're 20 but um, one thing I did want to mention, uh, I was speaking with someone uh, who had knew a lot about Black Block, and uh, she was saying that because the optics are so important, um, they actually don't want to kill anybody. Like, they set the, the cop shop, the um, Justice Center on fire, May 29th, I wrote a story about a woman that was works there trapped in the basement. You talk about rubber cementing someone in. Um, they actually know that killing someone is going to be bad optics. So they're going to keep that. But here's my contention, and I've written about this. This movement has a glow, right? And it glows and it glows and it glows. What people are attracted to glow. It's not always going to be someone that's in your little black block affinity group. It's going to be Mr. Bonehead over here that is going to be a hero or going to like just take it to the next level. You have no control over that. Right. right. Oh, so I don't accept this uh, they know for exactly the reason you just pointed out. Some of them know, right? But the very nature of this thing, the cellular nature of Black Bloc, and their central dogma involves this euphemistically named diversity of tactics thing. Mm -hmm. And the point is diversity of tactics means essentially, look, um, we're going to have some timid people, they're going to do some protest stuff. Right. That'll be good for the optics. We're going to have right. some violent people. They're going to do some thuggery, right? And, uh, you know, innovate something. And the point is, look, you're telling people that it's a diversity of tactics. You're spray painting the wall with the suggestion that police deserve to be murdered, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody takes your goddamn suggestion, right, that's on you. You set this up. And the fact that you didn't really mean it is nothing right but they'll they'll never but they'll never ever accept that right so okay joe bonehead goes and he kills two cops right but who's Nancy, gonna take responsibility for that why do we care what they accept they are in violation of the law they are proposing things that are inconsistent with the continuing of society. We have every right to shut this down. And you know what it's going to look like when it gets shut down? It's going to be ugly. So be it. That's the nature of it. <laughs>